Hi everyone. Okay, no, maybe it'll work like this. Um, in today's workshop, I want to actually uh, talk about uh, the new module uh, called ExoCounts. Uh, it's a new module in the SDK, and we'll dive into it and to, uh, with how to use it, what it does. So first of all, who I am? I'm Julien Robert. I'm the Cosmos SDK Engineering Lead at Binary Builders. Uh, at Binary Builder, we maintain the SDK with uh, uh, with Zondax. I care really much about uh, DevX, actually. Uh, this is uh, something that I like uh, uh, a lot, and uh, I really watch out. I like to watch out that uh, things in the SDK are uh, a risk to you. So if you find uh, X accounts API confusing or anything, and the feedback is welcome, uh, as it's not entirely released yet, we can uh, we can make all the improvement uh, uh, that you want here, and you communicate with us. So let's just dive right into it. So first, we have to explain what is an EOA, what is an externally owned account, before we even understand what is a smart account. So most of accounts on the Cosmos SDK blockchains or even Ethereum blockchains are EOAs. So this is basically an account that has a private key. So what it does, like you can think of uh, Exos base account, it just uh, has an anti handler and it does a simple signature verification and uh, uh, doesn't have any programmable logic and quite limited functionalities. So compared to a small account, you cannot implement custom logic. Uh, you don't have built-in multi-c capabilities or um, no programmable security rules or no account abstraction. So let's say that you have your, your um, you create a new EOA and you, you lost your mnemonic or you lost your private key. Uh, 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 you were not able, for instance, to, to swap it or, or anything or have an, any account recovery mechanism. So that's the most basic account. Um, in the Cosmos SDK, we have like two types of, uh, of those accounts. We have uh, base accounts, which is the most basic form. And we have as well something that we call vesting account, which is a special type of account that does only vesting. Uh, those are um, exist in the XOS module, I defined there. And we have basically the anti under logic in the SDK, although uh, uh, the signature verification. But we can have something better. We can have smart accounts uh, that is programmable accounts. So you can have custom logic. You can define, for instance, a different mecha authentication mechanism directly in the account specified. Uh, you can have like an account can have its own state and manage its own state, and you can like, execute like some other messages or uh, do extra handling before handling messages uh, uh, that you cannot do easily uh, uh, with a. Uh, uh, with the EOA. So for instance, X accounts that the module I'm going to present is the implementation for small accounts in the Cosmos SDK. So this is a new module uh, that is coming O52. And just like this was a small table to just sum up what I just said. I'm not going to read it, but you can uh, you can have it. Um, yeah, it's a new module in O52, uh, which provide flexible small account capability. So we created a bunch of helpers to, to help you doing that. Um, like when you'll be able, there is a set of APIs that can implement to create your own account. And uh, the SDK we see uh, uh, for ease of use provide a set of default accounts. So we have, for instance, again, a base account um, that is as well uh, taking a pub key and basically behave a bit like, uh, like an ERA currently, uh, a multi-sig, local vesting, and OSI. I'll just get into this in a tiny bit. So the core feature of X accounts are basically the custom execution logic. Uh, it has a stateful account behavior, which means you're able to, start, to store state uh, for an account. And it is isolated state, which means that uh, every new account basically have a new state. So you, you, you can have as well uh, multiple accounts, obviously. Uh, 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 so like every new user is a new account with its own state, which is quite handy when you want to do something account specific. And uh, we're adding as well a bundling functionality, which will allowing uh, the chain to basically uh, uh, submit transaction on behalf of users. So you can, for instance, think of uh, uh, fee abstraction, all the things uh, that are allowed via this. So now let's just dive into the types of accounts before we, we dive into how to implement an account. So those are the, I will go into the four types that exist. So base account, uh, it has a single uh, public key. 
uh, that you can uh, uh, that when you'll submit uh, when you create your account it will do like a dose correctly us and just assign it at the first time you submit your transaction obviously it has sequence anchor sequence number tracking that is done as well into suppress separate state some destination signature verification so it's like like a new a but we added like a swap cup pub key message that tells you for instance to like embrace icon abstraction because you, you you can you can eventually if you're like okay i want to rotate my key in a few uh, every few months for for security but i don't want to change my address uh, that's something that is possible so you, your cosmos address for for instance will stay the same you're like okay i want to uh, i want to use a new public key a new mnemonic and you're able to do that via that account and uh, we made it retro compatible with xos as uh, NT handlers and many logic depends on Exos uh, base account logic. So what we did is we allowed you to migrate your Exos account to an X account base account. So what it means effectively is that uh, um, you will be able to form O52 to uh, for chain that uses X account, which will recommend for almost any chain to actually implement this account, uh, this uh, module. Uh, you'll be able to send a message, migrate your previous uh, your previous account to a new X account, uh, uh, base account, and uh, and that's it. Then you like have a smart account uh, where you can have easily uh, uh, keep being swappable. So next to that, we added as well the multisig account. Um, so this has a bit like we know the the. The current multisig that there exists uh, in the Cosmos SDK, uh, where once you have actually defined multisig, you cannot really extend it. So we, we took a bit the design of uh, X Group, which is a module that exists in the Cosmos SDK that hasn't been really been adopted because of some design choices that we made. So what we did and is, as it made more sense uh, to be uh, uh, like X Group are fundamentally a multisig, so it makes more sense to be having it as a, a smart account implementation. So what it does is obviously you're able to initialize accounts with multiple members. So in the init phase, you'll be saying, okay, my multisig, there will be those uh, addresses that are uh, that are part of, and then you will be able to, uh, to execute messages uh, from that multisig. So what it does, it does the same way of it of group. So you'll be able to uh, create proposals. So you'll be saying, okay, I want this multisig to uh, to execute, uh, for instance, uh, message bank send uh, that goes from that, uh, to send money from that multisig to another address. If a multisig will, uh, a member will vote on it. And if it passes the threshold that you define at the initialization in the config, uh, it will execute the proposal. Uh, it's dynamic as well because now you're able to uh, update members. Say that someone leaves or is used it for as a sort of DAO uh, or, or whatever, you're just able to just ditch member and add new members. It's like uh, uh, it's, 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 it's easy that way. And as I've said, um, X group is a bit in the maintenance mode as. Uh, yeah, it was a bit, uh, it used a different type of ORM, it used a different type of authoring in the core of the module. So we decided, as it made more sense to have this module uh, as an X account, we just put it in maintenance mode. And um, it depends on the implementation. I believe in our implementation, it will be as well a vote. Uh, but that's something you can define in the, uh, uh, in the actual implementation with four hours. I believe it's a vote, yes. It's not, the, it's not like a dictator that can uh, update uh, everyone and bypass that okay um, now lockup accounts uh, so we basically uh, in O52 decided that uh, there was there were many problems basically in the vesting accounts and this was this other sort of exos account but with separate handling and bank and every, everywhere and it had some issue in the past few releases so we've decided to just ditch it so we disabled the creation from uh, exos vesting accounts uh, from O52. So before you had messages to allow you to, to create those, we disable that. Uh, we actually remove completely the handlers. Uh, if you still want to use it, obviously we cannot delete that feature. You're able to use those previous um, vesting accounts as uh, in Genesis. Uh, but the lockup account basically is an alternative to that, uh, which is another type of smart account. And uh, you can initialize um, initialize your vesting account uh, 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 by the locking uh, funds and this deciding, same as uh, the Exos vesting account, if it's a lump sum, so if everything will be vested until uh, X period, or if it's periodic, which is everything is being locked and unlocked every period. So we 
we named it from uh, vesting to lockup because apparently vesting means something else in legal terms uh, uh, and it is the implementation it is more a lockup account this was for pleasing uh, lawyers and people so that they, they can explain easily in, in the right term what is a, a lockup account uh, it's not a vesting account Personally, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know too much exactly the legal differences there, but uh, it does the same as it did before, which is uh, called lockup. Um, same capabilities, you can delegate, you can stake. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, prohibit people to do that, uh, as there are some people that think that a vesting account or lockup account shouldn't have staking capabilities, it's super simple. You can just re-implement that sort of account and just ditch those capabilities and then you won't be able to stake or anything. So yeah, so we, I quoted Uncle Ben uh, from Spider-Man with Grab for Congress responsibility. Uh, as you see, an account can do uh, many things. And you might think, okay, actually it's almost like a Cosmos SDK module. Why, uh, when do I actually create an X account and when do I create an SDK module? So there are a few set of like, not rules, but like uh, uh, Thing that we advise people to think of before they create a, a next account instead of a SDK module. So, for instance, is a logical specific to individual account? Uh, uh, you don't want to create something that uh, uh, that is, um, yeah, not specific but more general, and that doesn't need it to hold its own uh, its own state per user. We need to have a shared state, or maybe need to access other uh, other module state. For instance, the local account is a great example. Um, you need to rely on um, on staking uh, and tracking, slashing, and things like that, which gets very quickly hairy as an X account, uh, a small account, doesn't really have any idea of what is happening in the blockchain. It is just managing its whole chain, its whole life, and then that means you need to add many tracking stuff, and it can get very quickly ugly. So um, something more complicated as in that you think that, that needs other that relies on other modules. Uh, uh, um, like the great example was, for instance, fee grant. Um, we actually investigated to migrate that to a smart account, but that wasn't playing too well as uh, as you need, for instance, logic to run before to check fees, etc. Um, and it, uh, <clears throat> and the fee grant basically is a map uh, uh, of uh, grantors and grantees, and then it was depending on the more on the share state, no more on the isolated state. So this is something that. Uh, we actually won't migrate to uh, an X account right now, uh, but use another, probably with Bandler, we will want to, uh, to do that. But that's something to take in mind. That's something as well that happened to us. We're like, okay, X account can do everything, uh, but there is still some meditation. And when you do one, you should uh, um, uh, uh, think of it as, okay, I really need, uh, uh, this is really an X, an X account, uh, a smart account, and not a module. All right, now we can just look at a very simple example before we dive into the actual interesting bit and the implementation part of the workshop. Um, so how do you actually uh, implement your smart account? So you have, uh, this is defined in Go. So you have, for instance, uh, this will be a super simple counter account. So that the most basic thing you can do. Um, so it's just a struct, like here we have a collection, like the owner of the account. Uh, we have uh, the, the, the counter, which will be, uh, uh, as its resulted state, every account will have its own counter. And uh, uh, so it, it can just be a collection that's just all the counter. It doesn't have to be if it was a module, a collection that holds a map that holds the, the address and the counter. Now every account is basically prefixed by, uh, uh, by its owner. So uh, that's, um, that's not necessary. Test take code is something that we use for testing. And then um, we use some core services as well, like the address codec, uh, the gas service, and the other service. Uh, that's part of our uh, implementation. But what really, what is really needed uh, for your account to, to work and to implement, so just implement those uh, three interfaces. Uh, basically, as I mentioned earlier, you have the init phase uh, uh, that I will go in a bit, uh, which is the to create your, your, your account, to initialize it, and then you can register extra uh, uh, 
extra messages that your account can execute. So you can register that and uh, extra queries that your account can have, then you can register that. So the X account have like a router that allows you to uh, to query things from an account and to um, to execute things from an account. So it changes the flow that we had before where you will just uh, uh, submit a module transaction, sign it, etc. When you want to interact via an X account, you'll go via the X account module. So, Super simple stuff, message init, we want to initialize it with an init value, that's a problem message um, here. There we, we have some nice account helpers, uh, 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 for instance, uh, when you create your X account, you're able to use the sender action library, say, okay, this is a sender, uh, account uh, will know who is the sender. Uh, uh, you set the you set in the collection. Okay, the sender you set as the owner. You uh, update the counter with initial value, and uh, that's it. Um, then you want to increase it, obviously. So that's an execute uh, message. So um, again, basic stuff. You you have an amount. Uh, uh, you want it to return uh, uh, the new amount when uh, as a response of that message. Uh, this is basic problem messages. Um, and the logic is like you have again, this almost look like uh, when you're doing a, a, a normal module and when you find like a, 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 a method on the GRPC service, it's almost look the same. Like you have the context, you have the message, you have the response. You again get the sender, you get the counter, uh, the, uh, the owner, you verify if it's the same, uh, uh, and then you just set the um, increase the, the counter basically. Um, for the for a query, obviously, we want to create a counter. Super simple again. The request doesn't have to contain anything. Uh, you want to return the uh, the uh, the amount of the counter. So um, yeah, you just get the counter and it and return that value as again isolated state. No need to 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 check in that case for query. Um, optional, indeed, you can obviously implement your own authentication logic. I'm not sure if we actually see anything. Yeah, it looks not quite readable. I'm, go I'm going to, I can maybe, I, I will say that now. So basically, uh, it's a message that you're able to, uh, to implement. It's a, a method, and then you can have any other authentication logic in there. So uh, uh, by default, if you have like uh, what the uh, base account does is like a small EOA where you um, where it will check the pub key a bit like the anti handler is doing. Uh, but basically, when you define an authenticate method, uh, the anti handler that does signature verification from the SDK will basically check: okay, is this an account, an ex, uh, a smart account? I will run the authenticate function from uh, uh, from the, ex, the from the smart account. So yeah, that way you're able to to have any other authentication logic uh, and, def and define that freely. So that was actually the, 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 the quick uh, presentation on uh, what everything is. Now, it's, I think it was place for going to uh, the hands-on exercise. What I did is I just did a, a small, okay, I'll go into it, uh, a small repo that you can uh, check out and then maybe try to, to play with the APIs. Uh, at the end, we can we can just uh, if you have any question, you can just hit me up and we can just uh, look. I did just quickly as well a, a small implementation of that. As you see, it will be it should be simple to use. If you have anything you, that you don't understand, feel free to hit me up. And I thought for the exercise, like they were just a multi-sig ag recently, so maybe let's just put the other multi-sig implementation. <laughs> uh, like the idea was like maybe all signer must approve within twenty blocks. I don't know if it would have held there as. They were just maybe they would have all been like, oh wait, but there was blind signing, so it doesn't really matter for for this specific case. Uh, obviously, in basic mill six stuff, any sign can issue a transaction, uh, transaction expire if not fully signed, and state tracking for opening transaction, so you can query the opening transaction. It differ from the mill six account that we have, uh, where there is proposal and everything. This will be like uh, someone submit a transaction, uh, the other will. Uh, uh, we we'll basically approve that transaction, so I'll vote on it, and then it will just get exec executed. That will not be a. It's a different naming. It's a bit the same, uh, the same flow, uh, but it's not a per se proposal. Uh, so it should be fairly simple to implement. Uh, there is a repo here with like the basic to get you started. Uh, this is based on uh, chain minimal, uh, which is like a very basic chain. Uh, in there, there is like 
the script for proto generation and uh, you should be able to get to it actually um, uh, let me just go there I did that like yesterday but uh, so here so yeah you just you just get clone this uh, look into um, the repo you can check a bit it's basically 052 so this is uh, using the beta 2 as OX account is already uh, uh, it's basically available from that uh, there is a, a script that you can have for uh, initializing the chain and you can run the chain um, you, when you have to build a proto, small command that is nice to use is make proto as any that is already there as like any Cosmos uh, developer knows to use using proto builder. And then um, then there is the account documentation of me. I'm here to help in this thing if you want to do it now. Um, the account documentation uh, uh, to see, to read, and to see if it's good enough for you to, to implement based on what I said earlier as well. And you can cheat a bit. I did like a very, very basic, small implementation here, but uh, yeah, I, I say it's on you now, uh, as it's a bit of a workshop, uh, I, I just was curious if you want to try that now, and then we can have uh, questions, and uh, I'm happy to answer anything uh, in the meantime. I will submit the slides as well in the repo, so that you can, uh, uh, check the APIs that might be useful too. Um, if you want, while we're doing this, I can uh, go through as well an actual uh, account implementation. Maybe that will help. Or we can just stay silent in the meantime. Doesn't really matter for me. Okay, let's do it. I will just upload a slide there. Send that uh, workshop handy file. And um, while you can it, I'm just going to go through the actual um, Build the implementation we have in GCK. I hope you won't, for those that don't want to do that smaller size. Okay. Um, while you're busy, I'm just going to go through uh, in the actual more than more than, uh, a more complicated example than just a counter. It will be as well in sick but maybe we can look at lookup. Doesn't really matter. Anyone wants to look at something particular as an next account implementation, like. Uh, um, Lockup multisig. I can just talk about it while you guys are looking. Okay, I'll do multisig as it's quite relevant then. Okay, so here in that uh, multi from the Cosmos SDK, what we do is uh, the message in it, as I mentioned. Let's just review the profile. Um, as I mentioned, you want to have uh, any member. Uh, uh, a member is, as you can see here, it's just an address with a weight, um, as you want maybe to give some people uh, more voting power than others. Um, then you have like the, the config of the multisig. That's something that is handy as um, you will just have any logic for him. Uh, yeah. If you implement your own account, you can do such things and have any config. So the config is um, a threshold, the quorum, the voting period, uh, a load, so if you can change your vote or not, and if um, the uh, proposal can be executed before the end of the uh, voting period. So once you, um, I can maybe show as well how you can use that. Afterwards, I'll show the CLIs and how is it to interact with uh, the module as you see the difference. Um, but here you have a message for creating the proposal. A proposal looks a bit like a um, um, gov uh, proposal, which has a title, a summary, a set of uh, message that you can have, and then you can define when um, the voting period is ending uh, uh, of your proposal. So, so that's pretty cool, as it's not like limited to um, to like our gov parameters of group parameters, and now is the um, the the initiator of that uh, proposal that will decide when it ends, and the status as it can have multiple status, which is uh, in the voting period pass or rejected. Um, then obviously you can vote on a proposal. You vote given the proposal ID and you put your vote, which I believe is just yes, no, abstain, as yeah, you don't really need no vis veto there, obviously. 
Then you can uh, execute manual proposal. Um, as you've seen before, there it is probably using in the implementation uh, that check to verify if you're able to execute it before or not. This will probably check the threshold uh, and the core home when you when you call that. And you can update the config, so you can update members. Uh, uh, and the way you update members is putting their way to zero. And uh, you can as well update uh, the, the config of uh, of the multi exchange index threshold in your quorum. I suppose like if you rem uh, remove a member, you and uh, uh, they probably have some some validation check there, but uh, you should watch out. You update accordingly the uh, the config to not be like locked out. Uh, yeah, the idea was like I'm gonna check. The idea was indeed to uh, do it first and then. We can review like the implementation I did. This was very simple. Like there is, it's not like how it should be done. It's like a way to do it. Like if you look at the state management, it's all messy. But uh, it's what showing to be able to show something that works. Um, but thanks, Reese. Um, okay, now let's go to implementation. Oh, it looks like. Uh, for module, uh, uh, sorry, not a module, an account a bit harder, as complicated than a counter. Um, all right, the interesting part is obviously we, we have the that file is generated as uh, pro generated here, um, and then we can go to the account.go file and you can see um, the uh, account state, the, like the multiple account states. So it has only um, five uh, five collections uh, uh, members. Uh, the sequences uh, uh, of the transaction. It holds as well the config of the will seek, uh, all the proposals, and the votes. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with collection. It is. Uh, um, it's, uh, it exists since, I think, since 050 or maybe 047. I'm not sure exactly from which version. It tells you to manage state uh, in a way nicer way than before. Um, so this is what uh, what uses the SDK everywhere right now. Um, so you can. Here we create a map, and as you see, uh, the account takes uh, account C dependencies. So this is all the uh, the dependency that the account uh, that an account can have. So it the, it will provide you like uh, useful services such as the other service, event service, and I think transaction service for uh, um, and as well as the address codec. And the schema builder is something that uh, uh, allows collection to properly um, handle the state. Um, I won't explain how exactly collections work. I'm just reading basically those lines. It's we're just instantiating the collections. And then we go here to the init message, as I mentioned. And here the logic is fairly simple. Uh, validity check, uh, uh, sanity check, and then uh, adding the members to uh, to the uh, to the multisig state. Uh, validating the config, setting the config, and then you basically have your uh, multisig account created. Now, if someone, I think we should look at vote afterwards. Uh, if someone wants to create a proposal, uh, it says here that if the proposal contains a voting period, it will be used as well. Default voting period will be used. So in the config, you had the default voting period, but you will to override that. Um, so we verify if the submitter is actually a member, as uh, obviously uh, we increase the sequence. Uh, we we um, we verify if the proposal already exists, and then uh, we can uh, we can set the proposal, put it in the voting period, uh, uh, do that things about the ending period, the default one or the set one. Um, like I see stuff here now that we should like improve, like voting period should not be in the past and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's something that we should we should uh, uh, improve for sure there. Um, and then you have your proposal. Uh, it's Simmons and Evans. You don't really have to do that. This is something you can uh, you can have as well. Um, account transaction, uh, Simmons Evans. Then you can vote on the proposal as here above, which does the uh, checking the vote, getting a sender, verifying obviously that the uh, the sender is a member of the multisig, um, verifying you vote on the on the proposal that are uh, that, that hasn't handed. The cool thing compared to um, to um, to X group 
is that uh, I think the proposal are not pruned, are not pruned, uh, only the votes. Okay. Unless after, only when it's executed. And I think I may be wrong there, but let's see. Okay. It's very basic logic. As you see, it's like, it feels like a tiny module, but as I mentioned earlier, it's sort of a tiny module, but uh, it's quite powerful. Then you're able to execute a proposal. Same syntaxation logic. You have again um, um, some helpers that are useful. Um, like, as I mentioned, the accounts standard, standard package has many helpers and execute module and ease basically allows you uh, to execute from the account, uh, from that smart account, any message. So this is a set of helper that can uh, that you can use. Maybe afterwards, just, just look at that. And you can tell me as well if you're blocked somewhere in that small uh, exercise, so if you're still doing it or not. Okay, queries, query sequence, obviously checking Basically, getting it to like, uh, the collection, create a proposal, getting it from the collection, create a config, getting it from the collection. Um, and yeah, and here, what I mentioned earlier, the three actual things that you need to implement, which are the three uh, uh, registration of the, uh, of basically the roots of the uh, of the account. So the the, the register in it, register the end message, and then you're able to here register any other um, any other um, message that the account can have any other queries as well i say that's it that's very simple uh then you want to wire it um so how it's done is like run we use runtime and runtime uses that inject uh so you're able to easily wire uh, uh any x account or any module generally uses that inject so what you do is again there is an helper function which is pretty simple so you create a provider um, again, you use the account as salary, uh, um, and basically it will create a dep inject account. You, you give the name of the account. So when you will be doing, uh, via the CLI, uh, for instance, simd, uh, TX account, it will be the name of the account. This is how the, um, the routing to each account implementation is being done. And then the account implementation. Um, so that little thing basically allows you to wire that account with this account and now it's done later in your app let's just take this one that will be simpler to see here i already did as well the wiring for the default account that we have so you have that go basically in the providers of the app inject here you can uh, basically uh, provide every account type that you can support. So in that case, uh, we just did uh, uh, all the accounts that exist currently in the SDK and provide by default. And that's something that you need to do uh, explicitly when you develop your chain. You need to specify every account that uh, you want to use and your chain you want to support. And say you want to add a new account, uh, this is consensus breaking, so this requires a, a coordinated upgrade. Uh, that's something to note. Um, uh, yeah, so here uh, we know the AppInject provide, we just say, okay, we want to use the multi-sleeve account, we want to use the Bez account, you want to use the lockup account, and as well you can uh, define what type of pop key the, uh, 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 the base account is using, uh, this will change uh, the bit of the information, the integrator, and uh, you, you can define that, and if you want to use something else than say P256, uh, uh, you can, you can, and there is, uh, uh, you can create another, a new provider, uh, uh, for copy, or you can as well use the other that we provide. So yeah, that's that's the only thing to wire account. So let me just jump maybe uh, into here, like when you develop your new account here, as you see, there is like a custom account from the exercise. What you do to edit in your chain is simply edit here, and then your new smart account is basically wired and already available. Um, is anyone still busy with the um, with the exercise? As well as us, because uh, I want to leave you enough time to do it. But I can in the meantime maybe show you how you interact with an X account uh, uh, via the command lines. Um, I'm not. Unfortunately, I use SI and it doesn't. Um, 
it doesn't support HDMI output yet. So I will just do it from the documentation as here at Don't Use Mac OS. Like, I, don't, I probably don't even have Go installed. Yeah, so that won't work there. Um, so let me just like, look at the documentation. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we already explained pretty well there. Uh, but if you want to see it live, I would advise you to just check out this repo. As I've said, all the accounts are wired uh, and you can directly try with this chain, which is a running local chain, uh, single node, single validator. Uh, uh, so it's actually it's like three comments and then maybe you can follow uh, with me the, the comments that you can run. So let's go. I think the one with the tutorial is lockup. So let's just look at lockup. I'm curious if we got this in docs already. Okay, we haven't got that in the docs. We can just look on GitHub. This render file, it's fine. Okay. I can walk through that tutorial. Uh, um, it's fine too. So here, to set up a local account, what you do is here, the, uh, you create basically two, um, two wallets. So using uh, uh, the, 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 um, your local key ring, then when you initialize uh, an account, basically you have to do it via JSON. Uh, in the CLI, we try in there to improve the UX, uh, but currently in the CLI, you as well have to just pass on JSON, uh, 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 which is a bit meh, I have to say, but uh, we'll improve that before the release uh, of the account uh, module. Um, so here on um, on the, on the, um, on the lockup account, basically it doesn't hold a pub key. So you're able to uh, compare to what you had in, uh, previously, is you're able to set the lockup account as an owner, and then you're able to execute transactions via that lockup account. Before, if you had to, uh, for instance, for whatever reason, needed the vesting account to receive tokens for something, you had to create a new mnemonic, and it has to be an initialized account, and it was quite annoying. Now, as it's like not an externally owned uh, uh, account, then you can just say, okay, I own this address, uh, which is a bit, uh, this account, uh, um, which will have a bit longer address than a normal Cosmos address. And basically the owner is able to submit any transaction in this account. So it's just, uh, uh, so you have another address that is linked to, you say, your primary wallet, and you can have like an infinite of those. Uh, uh, so you just have like, you can have like one mnemonic you have to remember that you swap from time to time. and um, and have many other uh, many other small accounts that are owned by this address, which is as well something nice and possible with uh, with small accounts. Um, so here I'm saying, okay, uh, um, this is my um, uh, this is my um, uh, I create for this address uh, a vesting account. Uh, this is a start time and the end time. Um, you can do that for a periodic account, uh, for instance. And then what you have to do is indeed, uh, when you do the, uh, the initialization, you go via X account and you do uh, you app chain DX accounts in it. Uh, the, the, um, the name of, um, of the account you're trying to, um, to uh, execute and then the content and you have to say who is creating it. So in a case of a, uh, of a, um, Lockup account is would be weird if the owner is a creator. So this is like, like he has like two different people, someone that will found the facing account and the uh, lockup account, the actual owner of that uh, lockup account. And then afterwards, you're just able to um, to just execute a set of transaction uh, from that account as the owner. So um, here you can say, okay, I execute from this address this. Uh, uh, message, so it will be again um, uh, the 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 address uh, of the message that the account is allowed to to use. So in this case, this account is only able to do delegation, staking, a withdrawing reward, and backsend. Uh, I mean, they're all able to do backsend, but you get the idea. So in that case, uh, you you precise basically the type URL of the account, so account knows how to route uh, uh, the message. The, the account message uh, uh, properly. So in that case here, uh, you do a delegate. So you want to delegate 100 stake. Uh, so you will uh, do the execution, precise your account address, precise the message you want to execute, uh, uh, um, the content, and uh, do the um, 
sign was from. So again, it's a bit of a, a for the CLI, uh, as you see, it's diverse quite a bit from what you had before, where you can just, because you have an extra router, uh, so you go via account, and then it does a routing of the specific, of the other message. Uh, will improve, obviously, a bit the, um, the UX and the CLI, uh, for instance, uh, 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 but that you, you get the idea. It's the same for every other uh, method impl uh, execution uh, method implemented into um, the account. So you just have basically based on the message that you had define your Perl buff, uh, you use the Marshall JSON version of it, and you just basically broadcast it and execute it. So this is like the typical um, this is a typical flow. And then for queries, you do the same thing. It uses, you route it if you have the account, the request type, and the, um, the actual query content, if any. And from, um, I'm sure you didn't from, you actually don't need from, but uh, yeah. That's it, that's how the current uh, CLI UX is. We'll improve it. Um, if you have any suggestions, feel free, or if you play with it and you're like, okay, this is quite bad UX, feel free to submit an issue or talk to me. Uh, we can, uh, we'll look into improving it for sure. Uh, but it will be released probably uh, soon. Like we'll, as we're planning to release O52 in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're just waiting on integration with IBC, but as soon as we release, all modules will be as well released and available to use. Right now, you have to do a bit of uh, you can you can use the beta and uh, for that, but it will be soon available for your chains. So I've been talking much. Maybe uh, anyone has questions, or maybe we can uh, if someone has question on the implementation uh, of an X account. If someone played with it, uh, how do you? Let's, let's make it a bit interactive. How do you? Uh, what do you think? Silent crowd. <laughs> All right, that, that's possible too. Um, we can always wait. Oh, if you have a question, I can do that in your own time. Uh, we can maybe recap. What time is it? It's an hour. Okay. Um, yeah, as I've said, you can already start to build it today. Uh, it's not released, but we have beta tags. And uh, the chain minimal stuff is like a small, already ready V052. Uh, 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 CMAP, let's say, with minimal basic stuff. I know uh, Ignite v29 has as well a VPO52 compatibility and probably Span uh, uh, will get that very soon. So you can use those three things, like Chain Minimal, Ignite, Span, to uh, uh, to scaffold like the basic O52 chain. Um, and then you can already play with X account as I showed you and start to implement your account. Like you can just come up with anything, like any fancy authentication logic. I don't know if you think of 2FA or uh, uh, um, and yeah, this the, 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 it's quite limitless what you can do. Uh, uh, so yeah, try have fun with it. Yes. Yes, we have actually the uh, leap is doing that. Uh, they they want to integrate that in um, in X accounts. Uh, I think they have a PR. We have to get back to them. Oh, they are in draft, so they have to get. They have to modify a thing, a few things. But this PR here, 21755, is adding uh, Pascal support to base account, which will be quite handy as well, indeed. Um, let me actually just ping them. OK, but it was, this, this, will get, uh, this will as well get uh, 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 released with the base account, yes. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah, so, yes? So uh, the base account the really only has an authenticate method and doesn't really have any specific queries or uh, executing logic. So it's still, it's like, because you have a PBT assigned to it, it's like a sort of, uh, uh, sort of a EOA, I have to say. And what you have to do is you have to do a manual migration. Like we're working currently for the next version to migrate away from auth completely uh, because X account is a superior design and works better. Uh, but say you migrate to 52, the flow will be like, I want to use X account. I will submit uh, uh, just a message. It will be, I think it's called message migrate legacy account. And it will do the migration, basically set 
uh, create the X account based on the pub key of the uh, of the account that is submitting a transaction and do the migration and just swap it. And basically, what uh, uh, many chains currently depend on X account uh, on X auth. So many close terms. Uh, many chains currently depend on X auth. So we made it so that uh, um, we get, for instance, the account number when you get something uh, that is that was XOS related, it will basically fall back to X accounts so that we don't break anyone like all clients that uses, for instance, uh, XOS GRC gateway endpoints. Uh, so the migration should be simple. Um, I can show it here if you want, we still have some time. Uh, yeah. Is there another question? Okay, let's just look then uh, quickly at the. So this is, um, this is a message that you're able to do. Um, which define basically uh, uh, the account. But I don't think, and this will be something you can submit. Let me just check the uh, actual message handler. Whoops. So this is really, you can only migrate um, a base account. So this is why we can't really get rid totally of Exos because of vesting accounts as the vesting account implementation is really a smart account doesn't really have a pub key. Uh, you only m allow to migrate a, a base account, so any normal accounts. And this is why for all current chains, in the future, uh, we're planning to um, to basically migrate everyone to an X account, except vesting accounts as uh, the design changed there. So for any, for the hub or any chain that are there for a bit, uh, they all have a vesting account, so they will have to keep XAuth in their chain. But say you're a new chain, uh, the idea is soon that you will not need XAuth at all. Um, so, yeah. If there is no more questions, um, or if they come later, I'm available to answer them later as well, or ping me on GitHub or whatever. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here.